Well, Johnny Flynn, uh, Albert Einstein is your role in Genius. Uh, the younger Albert Einstein, Jeffrey Rush, plays him older. Um, I I've talked to several people behind the scenes on your project, and it they tell me it took them a long time to figure out who was going to take the role that you took. What, why, what was that process like for you? Well, I... Um I, I got the script, uh, well, a script, uh, an early draft of, of the kind of uh, pilot episode um, last year in like May or June. And um, I just, I thought it was ridiculous that they would send that to me because I, you know, I, I don't look like Einstein and I, it seemed too good, you know, it's, you know, playing Einstein for, for Ron Howard and, uh, it, I just, I immediately just passed on it. I, I, I wasn't going to do it because I wasn't going to send in the tapes because I just thought it was too, too silly. Uh, but my friend who I was working with at the time, um, I was, I was filming another TV series, and she, she, she was like, "You're an idiot. You, you have to do this." So she kind of, she, she held me almost at gunpoint to, to, to make these tapes. And then the next thing I knew, I was skyping with, with Ron Howard and. Uh, it was really then that I, I got excited about it because he was telling me his approach to the series and telling the story, which was, uh, you know, really just to sort of demystify this person that we know very little about. We have a very sort of two-dimensional image of, of who Einstein is because of his the nature of his celebrity and his sort of enigmatic qualities. And it was interesting to for me as well to play him in the period when he wasn't a celebrity yet you know he was he was a young guy with radical ideas trying to kind of break down these you know glass ceilings of inherited knowledge and and kind of and get these theories out there but he wasn't even for most of that time he wasn't even a, a professor working in a university he wasn't a, Working as a scientist, he was he was a, a third class patent clerk in uh, in an office in Switzerland in Bern in in Switzerland. So it's exciting, you know, to 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 dive into that level of kind of rebellious energy and imagine who this young guy was. And uh, the whole thing's been a crazy roller coaster for me. We were talking to your showrunner Ken earlier today, and he said. Everybody liked, you know, your essence and what you were bringing, but they couldn't picture you as Einstein. And it was Brian Grazer, Grazer that said, you know, that's the magic of film. We can make him, we can make, we can do that. We can make Johnny look, look the part. God bless Brian Grazer. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, they, yeah, I mean, I'm very lucky that they thought they could do that. Because even in the screen test, when I went to L.A. to, to, to meet with Ron in person and actually uh, sit down and do some stuff. Um, I was doing another movie at that point, and I couldn't, I couldn't like dye my hair or shave off. I had like a scruffy beard, and so I'm. I I guess something worked, and they saw some quality. And I'm very, I'm lucky they did because uh, they held faith, and then they they had a couple of absolutely amazing makeup designers on the show and um Davina Lamont who's been with us here in, in LA this week she she's like a prosthetics like genius I mean she's completely incredible uh she learned her trade uh she's she's a New Zealander and she her early stuff was working on um all the all the um Lord of the Rings movies and New Zealand and stuff so she's like this prosthetics wizard and uh and not just me and Jeffrey being, you know, uh, made to look like Einstein, but she had to, in certain instances, she aged characters from like 30 to like, you know, 70 or something. There's a, um, a character, the actor uh, who plays Hoover, um, and, uh, and, he, and he spans about 50 years. So that, this amount of brilliant work in the makeup and hair department as well. But I'm very lucky that, you know, Brian Grazer originally thought that they could do it, and then they spoke to people that could uh, could help that happen. Once you were on set, you're in, get, you know, now you're through with the other movies so you can actually get your hair uh, done properly and you don't have the beard anymore, and they're starting to make you look. What's that first moment like when you look in the mirror and you go, wow, I, I can see this? 
I mean, it was inc it was incredible just turning up, um, and it was all a bit of a whirlwind because I finished um, even having got won the role. Um, it nearly couldn't happen because uh, the movie that I was booked on they had like an insurance period after the shooting finished where I had to stay out and um, you know in case in case they needed reshoots and stuff. So they they had these two companies kind of. Um, even though theoretically I was free, I, I I I had to be still available to this other movie. And then by the time I got to Prague, where we were shooting um, Einstein Genius, um, I only had there was only a couple of days. I mean, there was like a week or two of 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 prep, but there was a very brief window for doing the. Um, which run you know which I haven't really done before uh, yeah, I've done a project on this on this kind of scale before and and obviously the, there's lots of executives and studio people that need to sign off on all the looks and they haven't seen me yet as Einstein so it was like a a crazy whirlwind of like cutting and dyeing my hair and putting contact lenses in and trying on various prosthetic pieces and all sorts of stuff and and that whole period I was being crammed with you know dialect classes and violin lessons and all sorts so I look back on that time as this mad kind of race to get me into into Einstein's kind of mold um, and meanwhile me and Jeffrey were talking a lot and corresponding about the character and, and trying to align our, our ideas for who he could be um, but it, did it, you still more uh, off of him, or did he still more off of you? <laughs> well, I w I'd been filming uh, several months by the time he came on set, um, but there was a period of time when we were both in London after I'd finished, after I'd started filming, and I had like a little gap, and I I was back in London, and and he was there because his daughter was studying college, and and we got to just hang out. And um, I think that more than anything was was the most valuable thing. He he was very sweet and gracious. He took me and my wife out to um, uh, like a comedy sketch show, um, mad cat um, comedians. And and I think actually the co the comedy in the character of Einstein was something that we both seized on. We both have a background in doing well theatre and and comedy uh, in particular. And um, physical comedy. He, he, he studied at, at the Jacques Lecoq school in Paris, which is a kind of a physical, you know, uh, mime sort of physical comedy school. Uh, that's stuff that I'm really interested in as well. And we both, we, ju we just sort of seized on that. We'd send each other videos of like Harper Marx or Charlie Chaplin or whatever, and, 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 and consider these things as, as quite Einsteinian. In nature, so I think actually we really just and and um, it was it was great. He was very generous in in working with me on that as well. And we would watch each other film whenever we could. Sometimes we'd be on set at the same time doing like alternate scenes. Obviously, we weren't in the same scenes together, but we could watch each other film and just pick up on mannerisms and vocal stuff. We had the same vocal coach as well and. So that was great. One thing I've, I've seen the first three, and and both of you are in the first one, and then you take over for a while, and uh, I haven't seen the the latter ones, but he takes over later on. Um, yeah. One thing I love about the character is, especially in his youth when you play him, he cannot contain himself in terms of if he thinks mm -hmm. the professor's wrong, if he thinks he's got a better idea, uh, whatever the situation is, he just has to blurt it out. He has to say what he's thinking. Yeah, I mean he he was compelled uh, by a sort of subjective experience of of truth, um, which he felt should be uh, you know no understood as universal truth, and 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 what he met as a young student was, uh, I think, real resistance to innovation to these new ideas that he was having and, and it was like the, the bastion of, of a sort of professorial 
uh, egos in, in the world of physics and science had kind of kept a lid on these ideas for several hundred years and, 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 and he was challenging things that had been in place since, since Newton, you know, he was, he was um, upending these concepts that were held to be like standards of, 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 of truth for the laws of the physical universe and he was just disregarding all of that. He saw things in a completely different way and so of course he met with a lot of resistance and he pissed people off. He was he, in that way, he was kind of a rebel uh, and a punk. You know, he, was, he had more of um, an atmosphere of uh, like a bohemian poet rather than a, than a than a scientist in some ways. He was a dreamer and, and an idealist in that in that respect. Um, that was part of the fun was to realize those obstacles and to to have those clashes with those very authoritative militaristic uh, teachers that he had and and his. His clash with authority generally uh, was a theme throughout his life, but especially when he was young, it came out in 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 a lot of energy and 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 with some frustration and anger as well. You've had several acting roles, but I would say you're you're more well known for your musical career. What what does the knowing music inside and out do to help you as an actor? Oh, that's a cool question. Um, I would think the rhythms of music help you with the rhythms of language and the, and and, and yeah. you know portraying a character. Exactly. I mean, I I actually I approach language in a full perspective, and um, whenever I'm rehearsing a scene, I I think of it in terms of beats and pace and rhythm. And for me, there's um in all music in all good music, there's a series of uh, there's a dialogue. There's a question. There's questions and there's answers and there's um, uh, ideas posed within the structure of the melody or the or the rhythm. And um, so I have an abstract understanding of of or the drama and tension of a scene through the, through that kind of perspective as well. Uh, and it's almost like if you rely on that kind of intuition you know exactly like where it has to go or what would be the most surprising thing you could do in that moment you know the most dramatically interesting thing you could introduce at any given um, point in time whether you need to slow down or speed up or um, uh, you know or walk out the room or whatever but uh, there's that and then especially with this this uh, show you know there was a lot of work uh, done on the dialect and getting the and we have the conceit in the show of these people speaking English with a German accent but it, you know we know that in real life they they were speaking German or in some cases they were speaking Swiss German or Serbian or whatever but we have them speaking English with the accent or dialect of those places and um, but at the same time they're not supposed to be speaking their their second language. It's not actually like having a German person speaking English where they would be thinking very hard of, of how to say what they have to say. They, these ha they have to sound fluent and uh, like they're speaking their first language, but the indication has to be there in the voice of where they're from and everything. Einstein himself had a very thick um, Bavarian German accent when he spoke English, but he only learned to speak English like in his 40s or something. When you hear him on uh, press conferences and things like that, he's almost unintelligible. Um, but we, obviously we didn't want that. So I had to, I, I, I thought of it very musically in terms of collecting the sounds and listening to German speakers and trying to get some of those vowel sounds and and, um, and things like that to, to apply to that. To that. So that, that, that's all the sort of physical aspects of creating scene and, and the voice and everything. But then um, Einstein himself thought a lot in terms of music and used music as a, a way of getting into a sort of um, uh, kind of mystical state. He, he played the violin uh, when he was struggling to, to crack equations and things like that. And that would often um, bring him to a place where he could sort of uh, divine or intuit um, answers that he was looking for by 
um, abstracting the situation that he was in through through music, which uh, you know, I, for me personally, I find it 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 sort of it goes beyond language. It's a sort of emotional resonance sphere um, uh, effect on you and your environment that that, that is beyond linguistic kind of limitations. So I think he found that too, and um, I, I like to think of things in those realms as well. Well, good luck with it. I saw the first one so many weeks ago. I've been, you know, anxiously awaiting the, the public getting to see it because I think they're going to really enjoy it. And this could truly be a big, huge breakout role for you, one that, that people remember for you forever. Oh, cool. Well, that's uh, that's exciting. Um, uh, I'm, I'm just thrilled that, you know, that I was able to be a part of this. I mean, for me, it's like it's there's a, there's a huge amount of people involved and, and um uh, it was an amazing honor to work with Jeffrey and um, with Ron and, and with all of the creative people and, and, and so many brilliant actors came in and out a uh, span of time that I was there on set uh, doing my stuff. Uh, people that I've looked up to for years, um, I mean Emily Watson, I didn't have any scenes with her but she played my mom in my very first movie. And it was it was kind of funny. She came back to 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 be my wife on this, although you know, not in the scenes that I have. And I mean, people like Robert Lindsay, he plays my father. Um, I've I've watched him and admired him for years, and the whole thing was just a, a thrill. It was a joy. Well, good luck with it, and thanks for your time today. <laughs>